Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, I'll explain the self-employment tax. This topic is covered in an income tax course, surely the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind my viewers to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. This course will go under my income tax course and will go under my CPA questions. Please connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources such as true, false, PowerPoint slides, multiple choice. If you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA questions. If you are a CPA candidate, take a look. If you're an accounting student, take a look as well. So what is the big idea of self-employment tax? And where do students get confused with self-employment tax? Well, it's very important. What I find helpful actually is explaining the idea from an employee perspective because when we talk about self employment it means we are self-employed well why do we have to pay this tax what is that self-employment tax well you do also pay some of it if you are an employee what does that mean well let's take a look at a paycheck and i'll explain to you because it's very important to understand as an employee as an employee what is your share because that's important to understand the self-employment tax. So if you don't understand the employee picture, it's going to be confusing to understand the self-employment. So as an employee, you get paid. And for this, for, for the sake of illustration, this is the, your first pay stub. You were paid for this paycheck. And this is Julie Jones as a, as a sample. It doesn't matter who, who are we paying. We paid this individual gross amount of $1,000. So this is what the company paid this individual. Now, this individual, this individual will have money taken from their paycheck. So notice they have federal income, uh, federal income tax withholding 122. They have state, they have uh, federal OASDI or social security. Here we go. Let's focus on this. So as an employee, as an employee, the company will take from your paycheck certain amount of money. Now that certain amount of money is not is not random that certain amount of money is your gross amount times 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 6.2 percent times 6.2 percent so this is your social security or oasdi old age survivor and disability insurance ee the employee notice here they said ee which is that's why i picked this example so if you take 1083 times 6.2 percent you pay 67 67 dollars and 15 cent in ss social security tax as an employee well let's keep going let's look at the next line on the next line you have federal medicare ee or medicare 15.7 also it's no it's no coincidence how we arrive to that number it's one 1083 now we're going to look at the medicare 1083 times 1.45 percent if you come if you do this computation you're going to get 15 dollars and 70 cent so that's the medicare tax now this is what the employee paid now what you don't see what you don't see is the employer portion so as an employee you don't know or you might know but it doesn't matter but you have to know that your employer the company that you work for also paid 67 dollars and 15 cent and also paid 15 dollars and 70 cent simply put they matched your contribution you contributed this much to your social security they matched it you contributed this much which is 1570 to your medicare they matched it so simply put the social security rate between the employee and the employer it's 6.2 plus 6.2 equal to 12.4 percent so that's the social security rate now what else do we need to know about the social security rate something we need to know that you are subject to a social security tax up to a point now for this year we're in 2020 I believe the amount is 132,900. It doesn't matter what the amount is, but the amount is always given to you as, so simply put, once you earn more than that, they stop paying from your 
they stop taking money from your paycheck in terms of social security for medicare it's 1.45 for the employee plus 1.45 simply put it's 2.9 percent that's the medicare rate but they split it the employee pays something the employer pays something and here there's no limit so they don't stop taking medic medicare at any point so why are why am i explaining all of this because now let's go back to what we need to talk about if you are if you are if you are employer if you are self employed guess what if you are self employed you are the employee and you are the employer you are both if you are self employed you have to pay both you have to pay 12.4 2.9 which is let's do it social security 6.2 6.2 1.45 1.45 okay now there you go now you understand uh, that as a self-employed individual you have to pay both taxes now the company the company I, I erase what's on the other slide I forgot to tell you because before I erase them the employer share the employer share is deductible so remember the employer matched some of it that employer share they deducted on their taxes so they get a tax deduction now as a self-employed you don't you cannot deduct your share you cannot deduct half therefore what's going to happen because you cannot deduct half which is what's half seven point seven point six five percent so copy this number down so the 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 company can deduct seven point six five their share because you're the employee and the employer you don't you don't deduct 7.5 so what's going to happen for with the 7.65 the government is going to give you a break so this is the idea now let's take a look at the steps when you compute your self-employment tax and you're going to see why i i went through so let's take a look take a look at the steps to compute the self-employment tax step one we're going to we're going to do it step by step just for explanation but you, you could use your own method compute the amount the taxpayer net income from self-employment activity usually this is your you know from schedule c it's your income from self-employment which is your revenues minus your expenses it's as simple as that step two you multiply that amount in step one by 92.35 percent what we get is net earning from self-employment now the question is why 92.35 percent why why this number well there is no co it's not coincident that this number is 100 percent of your earning minus 0 0.765 0 0.0765 which would give us 92.35 percent and what is 0 0.765 well it's 6.2 and 1.45 7.65 what is this this is the government to give you a break because you're paying both so they're going to give you a break so they're going to lower your self-employment and uh, income and make it net earning from self-employment so when you take your income multiplied by this rate you're going to get your net earning from self-employment why do you do so because they want to give you a break because as a company the company gets a break for half of their social security break in a sense they get deduction you also have you're entitled to that okay because self-employed taxpayer are responsible for paying the entire amount of their fica share they are allowed an implicit deduction for 7.5 7.5 of the employer portion of the taxes leaving 92.35 percent of the full amount subject to self-employment tax noted 7.65 is 6.2 plus 1.45 now bear in mind uh, net earning from self-employment is the base for self-employment tax so if your net earning from self-employment is less than 400 you don't have to worry about the self-employment tax but you're still subject to income tax but not self-employment just FYI so now step one simply put all step one I explained it to you but this is in writing step three well step three compute the social security tax which is the 12.4 portion the social security tax of the self-employment equal to 12.4 multiplied by the lesser of so here, here we go remember social security there is a limit there's a limit and the limit for the purpose of this example the year that we are in is 132 900 so what you do with the step three for social security is you take the lesser of so you would choose the lesser of the lesser of 
step two or the limit whatever that limit happens to be the limit happens to be for our example 132 900 for year 2020 so so the limit between step step two or 132 900 now why the lesser of these two because if you earn less than 132 900 you only pay taxes on that amount if you earn more than 132 500 you only pay taxes on 132 900 so that's why you're limited to 132 900 now step four which is medicare it's easy what's step four You'll take the amount and you multiply it by 2.9. The amount from step two, you multiply it by 2.9. There's no limit, nothing to choose because there's no limit to worry about. The best way to illustrate this is to look at an example. Compute the self-employment tax on 150,000 of self-employment income. Well, step one is giving. Step one is 150,000. 150, I'm given self-employment income. Step two. Take the 150,000, multiply it by 0.235. So as a self-employed, you get a credit, you get a deduction, you get a break because you're both the employer and the employer. So let's take a look at 150 times 0.9235. And that's going to give us 138,525. And this is your step two. So this is step two figure. Now, what we need to do, we need to compute our Social Security component and our Medicare component. Well, Social Security component is, we're going to take the lesser of step two or the limit. The limit is 132,900. So we're going to take the limit because the limit is lower, 132,900. You're not going to pay taxes 138,525 Social Security if the limit is 132,900. You only have to pay Social Security up to a point times 12.4. And that's going to give you 16,479.6. We're going to look at Medicare. Medicare? Medicare tax? Guess what? It's the 138,525. Whatever you computed in step two times 2.9. And that's going to give you $4,017.22. When we combine those two together, that's 20,496. Now, if you want to go a step further, you might be asked, give me the employee portion and the employer portion. Well, divide by two, and whatever the answer is, half of it the employee, half of the half of it as the employer, which is ten thousand two forty eight for the empl the employee portion, and ten thousand two forty eight is the employer portion, and that's basically self employment tax in a nutshell. If you find this uh, recording helpful, I strongly suggest you visit my website for additional resources. If you're studying for your CPA exam. You don't want to take any chances. Study hard. Invest in your career. You invest once in your lifetime for 20, 30, 40 years in your career. Make that investment. Study hard. I'm always here to help you. It's worth it. Good luck.